Turning your business at loss. Finally, you are unable to pay them anymore. And then they don't even mind. Don't pay us. At least we make more money from stealing your egg or stealing your chicken. So if you catch them, they will gaslight you. They will shout God. They will use God. They will use everything to kind of threaten you. And you'll become a bad person. Uh-uh. Ah, uh, uh, now some rich people, they do. That is why I don't like rich people. Eh? They have been begging him since yesterday. Now he's threatened that he's going to arrest them. He's already told the police. They, eh? If you arrest them now, who is going to be feeding their children? Eh? That's why I don't like all these rich people. They will blame you. And that is what a corrupt country does. Corrupt country creates poverty. Since poverty is inequality, then it will create so many other crimes that are always going to be there. Eh? In that poverty state, even those of you who believe that you are better off, they will draw you down. They will drag you down. They will pull you until you find yourself inside that pit of poverty. A lot of us are playing, we are paying black taxes and we are, we are trying to get a cure from that. And we should be probably be holding uh, in uh, August. We should be hosting a seven day cell revival, eh? fasting and prayer for all of us outside the Nigeria in the diaspora that uh, within seven days make the universe cleanse us of uh, the, the affliction of black taxes. Are you with me? Because even at that, you will realize that everything about Nigeria, in all sincerity, if you are not careful, it is to drag you back into what you are running from, poverty. And when I saw that video, I felt sorry for the owner of the farm. He is happy he saw them. That doesn't mean that his dilemma is over. A society that they have created army of a poor people. They are, that society has created army of a different uh, criminals. And every one of them is out there to get you. Every one of them. So it's up to you now. If you want to go in there or not. On the issue of uh, those who are investing in that place. Who are taking the risk. Just know that you know what you are getting yourself into. If you're opening a business there, just know that on the side, you could at the same time be opening a charity. Because last, last, eh, majority of them inside your, your establishments, they are coming from the background of where they believe. Stealing from you could actually be an opportunity that you can miss. Even if your business is going to die, Due to that, where it's an opportunity. They are coming from a hard place created by the criminal politicians in that space. So you are always going to be a victim of what they have created. Do the math. And that is why in this situation, as a, a would-be victim of a contraption called Nigeria, you also need to be very careful that you do not walk straight into their trap. If you are in Lagos, Stop crossing their motorway, their expressways, or else hmm? this could be your lot. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. My friends, don't let them have free don't have a lot of things. Don't have a lot of things. Don't have a lot of For your own good, it's just an advice. Lately, I have been seeing videos like this. If you are in Lagos, for your own, number one, for your own safety, Stop crossing the motorway for your own safety. It doesn't make any sense. I've crossed it too. And I've watched people get knocked down by a fast moving car on in uh, Lagos, uh, I'm sorry, on uh, Ekorodu. 
what do you call that place again? Ikolo Road, around Pangru and Obanikolo. It's not safe. I know a lot of you give different excuses why you have to cross the road. It's not safe. Your life and all that is not safe. But on the other hand, to avoid embarrassments like that, where even those who are trying to, it's, you know, those ones who are like uh, arresting them there, the Kai guys, they are not arresting you because they love you or love your life. Oh. They don't, it's not because they don't want you to die. Oh. They are arresting you because that is also a means of uh, revenue generation for them too, because they are given targets. The target with the way Nigeria is right now, in the Tiknumbus, Nigeria, don't go crossroad for Lagos. So they will just use you as part of the revenue generation uh, contributors. Because from what I heard, some of these guy people, they have targets. The more they catch you, eh, is the more they make money. And possibly their bosses enjoy their, their weekends. The choice is yours, just so you know. I was talking about uh, being used and dumped. The people of Ebejuleki, Ebejuleki in that same Lagos, they had to come out uh, today because you've heard about the landmark. Landmark is this multi billionaire Naira investment. It's a beach resort where you have uh, all kinds of uh, games, family resort, uh, you know, adult uh, kind of a uh, meetup. Uh, you know, boat cruise or should I say cruise trip and all of that. It's meant to be a multi-billionaire business there that, has, that is expected to also generate over uh, 2,000 jobs. That's massive. But they said part of the land, which is uh, the sea, where they were to have their beach, is uh, a proper is the property of uh, the, I mean, so the Nigerian government, federal government. So they want to build the coastal highway along there. So there's been controversy of uh, oh, why would they do this now when they can easily redivert the blah 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 blah. Anyway, sure, they are not the only problem. They are not the only victims of that uh, shenanigans going on in that route. The newly created route called the Lagos Calabar. Star Highway. There are so much uh, fraud and fraudulent activities going on, like taking people's lands in the name of we are building new road, only for the owners of those lands who have been there, like our land, oh, to realize that those lands have now been like allocated to be sold to God knows who. But we thought you said this land was for was for development and for highway. Then I will go get to this or this part too. Who are you selling our land to? We thought you said it's for the highway. So it's kind of going on. I mean, right now, development and then uh, robbery. Nigeria will never cease to amaze you. But one thing that actually jolts me from what this man had to say is the fact that uh, they were those they are always being, they are the people that they are always used during election. How can you now do this to us after election? Say, oh, Baba. Sorry, I'll help you tell the world that they are taking your land. See, they have names. So I think I actually have the, uh, the names of all the communities uh, in the area. If you are from the area, you probably will know this. In Lagos, if you are from uh, Iwerekun, Solu, Solu, Olorun Mila, If you are from Awofe, and somewhere around the Odushino coastal communities, there are those who are like next to those uh, sea there. They have always been looking for the time to kick all of them out since they started their Lagos Atlantic projects along that line. And indeed, they also have their own electric deep uh, seaports. You see all these communities that are still there, they will, go in they will go into extinction in the next five years. And they know it because the entire place is already kind of like already they high in the air. They have already hide the entire place. When I still did it, they give ourselves ballet and all of that. It's just a matter of time. Ibejuleke people says Tifnubu shouldn't do this to them.
Even though personally, eh, I know that it is totally uncalled for. But it won't be the first time that if Nobu is taking over people's lands in Lagos, giving them to his friends in the name of development, only for you to see them as private uh, land and private properties. And the owners of the land, far gone, displaced, their houses and homes destroyed. Who are you going to go to? Go and do press protest. Go and protest. Who is going to now change that? Nobody changes it. That is what Nigeria represents. That is what Nigeria is. And that's what the people of Ibeju lucky. My time is almost up, and I really do want to take calls tonight if uh, you will be interested in uh, adding to this. However, we won't round up without having to give the credit to this, uh, the chess master. I'm mean, sorry, the chess uh, master. I've been a chess grandmaster. You see, this uh, young man uh, started, uh, you know, the project called the Chess in the Slum. Tunde Onokoya, mm, the founder of the Chess in the Slum, was a guy who decided to use uh, chess as a means of, uh, uh, you know, uh, revital, revitalization and then uh, rejuvenation of the vulnerable in the society, especially the young ones. Honestly speaking, these uh, his projects have not just been life-changing projects. They are like a sort of a world touching project, I'll put it that way. You see, Tunde went under the Oshodi Bridge. Where normally you will see the abandoned children or children who ran away from home, uh, sleeping rough under the bridge and possibly doing some many jobs, no education, no nothing, just there, available at the beck and call of what the Ash Society has for them. So Tunde was able to, act, you know, if, I'm talking about a place where ordinarily, if you are not, if you are not really tough, you don't go there. Places, you know, a place where to even say you want to do something good, you would have to actually bribe them or appease them. He found comfort around them. They welcomed him. And from there, hope was bad. And for the past uh, two, three years, I have actually been following him, right, and his activities. He has been using the same position and all of the successes is recorded in these years. Eh? to bring more positive development and changes to lives of so many other young people. I mean, I have seen him. Then a few days ago, there was, well, until it became that uh, more uh, viral, right? So a few days ago, we realized there was having uh, a 60, sorry, 58 hours uh, sort of marathon uh, chess game with uh, Someone called the American chess master, Sean. And they were going to play for 58 hours nonstop. And it won't be just with uh, Sean. It's going to be with other players. I mean, like tens or if not nearly 100 of people who also play, 100 of players who played with him. All of this was just like to raise awareness over what he's doing. Given education, given uh, 
shelter, giving clothing and health support to the supposed the society rejects, giving them new hope and uh, aspiration. And he's been doing it so well. Like, I feel so useless that why can't I just sit somewhere and learn how to play chess? To the point that, uh, that uh, all these young, young people, their lives changed and their knowledge changed and they became empowered to the point that they are now those who you can point at and say, wow, I am encouraged. So he was in New York with uh, his uh, next, and many Nigerians have been there to see him too, by the way. He was raising a million dollars for the support of uh, the, uh, you know, the poor, the poor children of Africa. It's been everywhere, but because of our time, I'll tell you, he finally achieved his set goal. He played the chess with a lot of other players that lasted for 60 hours without losing a game. Whatever that means, it must be grand. And it's now the talk of everyone. And I want us to also see that it's not all gloom and doom. Okay? Somebody, you know, the glory of Nigeria is mostly individual. Oh, you don't know that? Oh, it is individual. So if you are able to kind of get something or push something and achieve something, then they are likely going to say, oh, he's a Nigerian. Oh, he's a Nigerian. He's a... You know what I mean? No, come on. The wreck and the disgrace and the destruction that has been associated to further downgrade what Nigeria, has, what Nigeria is in the global uh, uh, space uh, remains the main uh, job or should I say main aspiration of your criminal politicians in Nigeria. But individually, people have managed to kind of do their best to show to the world that if not because of this contraption, there could have been so many superstars from the countries forced together called the people forced together to live in a contraption called Nigeria. There could have been so many countries that could have been shining out great and great, great men and women that would change the world. But in Nigeria, they killed them. So I'm happy for Tunde. A great job and a great achievement. Uh, the moment he ate, I think, 54 hours before the last uh, six hours on record. You want to see? <laughs> So I have seen people, people who have been through a lot of things. I'm talking about a lot of things that, uh, that, that, that has affected them. And in their recovery, some said they chose their chess. Some would say they chose this or that. And they were able to sort of like recover back from their trauma. I don't know Tunde's uh, trauma or inspiration. And I don't want to know. But somebody saw a loophole and he decided to step in, make his mark known. And I respect somebody like that. I will always respect people like that. And I respect this. I mean, I respect this guy too. A few hours, a few hours, I mean, sorry, a few hours after that uh, video you saw, he finally broke it. Now he's the uh, older, the world record older of uh, the longest chess. Uh, sort of the longest uh, hours of playing chess, multiple chess games, sort of. This record was said to have been held by two Norwegians uh, a few years back. He's broken that now, 60 hours. And Sean had this to say about today at the end of it all. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't look at what he receives, he doesn't look at anything. All he looks at is the future of the children. And I love his heart. And when I heard I was able to collaborate with him on this, I said yes right away. And I'm glad I did. You know what they say, 
nothing easy, you know, I messed it up. Nothing good comes from something easy. Let's like, talk loud. Like like you know what they say, nothing good from something easy. Me and, well, me and Tune did this, this last three days was probably one of the hardest things I ever did in my life. Wow. And it seems like we were just playing the game, but we played over 200 games. And literally, I almost quit, but because he says it all the time, we do it for the kids, I said I refuse. And we picked each other up at different moments throughout these three days, and yeah, yeah, it was a special yeah. day, man. God was with us. Yeah. That's some great stuff. And I hope you, uh, you get inspired to do something, too. All right? So I want to say thank you so much, everyone. Uh, for your time, and I'm going to take a quick break. If you want to still probably uh, be part of this, the number to call is right here on your screen, okay? Use it. When I come back, I will take calls. Don't go anywhere yet, at least. Hmm? <laughs> Hello, brother Maya. Good afternoon. Well, good evening in your place, sir. I know. Good afternoon. Good evening, uh, Celia. Our lady, how are you? Yes. Um, wonderful. Thank you, sir. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for joining us yes, again. Sir. Go on. So, about this uh, food, uh, me, 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 and the Yoruba people. Wait, agreement. What, what what was it called? I had signing peace agreements. Hmm. Jesus. Okay, okay. now no I don't know what to no call that. Kill our farmers. They are free to go to parks oh. now because we have now signed a yeah. peace deal. Like seriously. This is the height of it. Because so it's like ridiculous. It's, uh, getting ridiculous. So so. Mm. Oh. I don't know why the thing it just is like my head was shaped off my head, my, like I'm walking on my back, ba like skull. I don't know because this is like the height of witchcraft. We are seeing what is going on in the country day by day. Even people outside Nigeria are seeing what is going on. And then Yoruba people, I have seen videos of Yoruba people that the Fulanese have gone with their cat cows and they've eaten their cassava, their stuff on their farms, and it's so. It's painful to watch and stop. And then some Yoruba people will not. I don't even yeah, understand. Is it that some people? Know, actually, see, hmm. uh, Celia, if I if I am allowed to really bring stories as they truly are, some of them, we probably won't have this channel anymore. If I'm allowed, even as at uh, yesterday, there were still people butchered like that, butchered somewhere in the Tory. A Tory somewhere in Augusteto, they butcher them and they kill them. They butcher the skull like that. Fulani, Fulani, they call them Fulani as men. 
How could you call it a farmer's others clashes? Now only farmers they die. We know the same way the 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 others they are sustained injury during the clash. But it's because I'm not allowed to no. bring all those graphic images on your screen like this. That's why I just keep them out. Is this horrible? I'm waiting for the third thing to happen because the first one is the people that the rightful people that are fighting for a true Yoruba nation. Their 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 um their their fight is being uh corrupted in some ways with that group that uh, well I think it's some kind of manipulation or something. And then now another one came up with the uh, Fulani people trying to okay. So this if you notice these are like two 